da Vinci was a world-renowned inventor whose love for art and science was able to cultivate the two worlds and combine them into the best collab we would ever see. However, some collabs could also have been avoided, like Adidas versus NFTs and Balenciaga and Crocs. Driverless vehicles, however, apparently wasn't the only thing on Elon Musk's mind, but da Vinci's as well. Leonardo da Vinci designed a wind-up tricycle of sorts, and the machine was propelled by springs that rotated the wheels. But it wasn't until historians came to understand that the springs were leaf-shaped that they were able to recreate the design. As you can see here in this image, his thoughts on the design. However, it's unlikely that da Vinci ever intended this vehicle for the roads. This idea of making his ideas contemporary, like portraying the cart as the ancestor of the car, was Mussolini's, as he was concerned with portraying the superiority of the Italian genius. But this is false, as this says by a guy named Gigiorian, or Giorni. In fact, the car was probably another theatrical invention, since it could only travel about 40 meters. In 2004, a scaled-down version of the self-propelled vehicle was successfully built and put on display in Florence. When the car was actually assembled in 2006, experts noticed that it actually strikingly looked similar to the Mars Land Rover. One thing Leonardo da Vinci may have understood better than any of his contemporaries was that psychological effects of weapons in warfare. Da Vinci knew that the fear of weapons could instill in the enemies was just as important, if not more, than the damage that they could actually inflict. This was one of the main ideas behind many of da Vinci's war inventions among them. Designed for pure intimidation, da Vinci's crossbow was measured up to 27 yards across, as the device would have six wheels, three on each side for mobility, and the bow itself would be made of thin wood for flexibility. Rather than firing giant arrows, Leonardo's crossbow instead seems to be designed to fire large stones or possibly flaming bombs, just basically a whole catapult. For use though, the soldier spin a crank to pull back the bow and load the artillery, basically a catapult, and the soldier would then use a mallet to knock out the holding pin and fire the weapon, a catapult. A giant crossbow invention is a great example of the way da Vinci's artwork really brought into the ideas of his life. Throughout his illustrations, an idea however improbable becomes realistic and plausible. His vivid drawings of the giant crossbow invention can also make a clear idea that the impressive weapon was used to mainly terrify its enemies into fleeing rather than fighting. But hey, if it was used in an anime, I guess it looks cool. Speaking of crossbows, simply referred to as ingranaggio or gear, Leonardo da Vinci devised a wooden wheel upon which crossbows would be attached and fired in succession. The wheel was propelled by a person or a group who walked along on top while others presumably reloaded the crossbows. This giant wheel of crossbows is a very fascinating design as it seems to just look like a giant gear as described. Fun fact though about Leonardo da Vinci, Leonardo da Vinci was a painter, engineer, architect, inventor, and student of all things scientific. His natural genius crossed so many disciplines that he epitomized the term Renaissance man. Today he remains best known for his two paintings, Mona Lisa and The Last Supper. Largely self-educated, he filled dozens of secret notebooks with inventions, observations, and theories about pursuits from aeronautics to human anatomy. His combinations of intellect and imaginations allowed him to create, at least on paper, such inventions as the bicycle, the helicopter, and an airplane, based on the physiology and flying ability of a bat. I mean, a bridge's purpose is to move from one place to another. Not the bridge itself, but you. But you know what? Leonardo da Vinci thought, hey, why not the bridge move? So he made portable bridges. As an engineer, Leonardo da Vinci was hired to design canals, earthworks, and bridges. Although the latter was also used in combat, the Leonardo developed a several kind of bridges, including portable. Revolving structures military troops could take with them while on campaign. Leonardo drew various bridge designs between 1480 to 1485, many of which were meant to be temporary and built on site. Revolving bridges had interlocking beams fastened to a pylon that swung to shore, intentionally very light, strong, and easily portable. To have a bridge at the near ready, allowing troops to traverse rivers and other waterways that stood in their way while avoiding delays and dangerous bottlenecks at small crossings. Aside portable, he did think of revolving bridges as well, designed for Duke Sforza. Leonardo da Vinci's revolving bridge could be so quickly packed up and transported for use by armies on the move to pass over bodies of water. The bridges would swing across the stream or moat set down on the other side so that soldiers could pass with little trouble. The device had wheels and incorporated a rope and pulley system for both quick employment and easy transport. It was also equipped with a counterweight tank for balancing purposes, and da Vinci described the bridge on his notes as being light yet rugged, and it was one of the several bridges he designed for the Duke of his lifetime, although light and rugged is what I put on my dating profile. By studying the anatomy of an, uh, human corpses, da Vinci taught himself how muscles and joints work together to move bones. His mechanical doll was designed to mimic these processes using systems of pulleys, gears, and cables operated by a hand crank. I hate dolls, why did he make this? Which resulted in the desire of creating a mechanical knight. Da Vinci also incorporated this mechanism into his self-propelled cart invention, which many people considered the very first robot. 
But Da Vinci used this part to create another robot too, his robotic knight. Through a full drawing of Da Vinci's robotic knight has never been fully recovered as fragments detailing different aspects of the knight have been found scattered throughout his notebooks. Da Vinci's robots were mostly for entertainment of his wealthier patrons such as an automatic lion he invented for the king of France. The knight was mostly used for theatrical displays at parties thrown by uh, the Duke of Sforza. And his work with special effects is one of the few moments where his studies in engineering were really known for his uh, contemporaries, as most of these drawings were kept in private diaries, says one researcher. Using several different Da Vinci drawings as blueprints, robotics, a guy named Mark Rosham built a prototype of the robotic knight in 2002, which was able to walk and wave. Rosham noted how Da Vinci had designed the robotic knight to be easily constructed without a single unnecessary part. That's good to know. And so he decided to use Da Vinci's design as an inspiration for robots he developed for NASA. So I guess it worked out. The aerial screw is something that the Italian polymath Da Vinci drew in his design for the late you know, 1480s while he was employed in the military engineer by Ludovico Sforza, Duke of Milan, from 1494 to 1499. The pen and ink sketch outlines an idea for a flying machine similar to a modern helicopter with a spiral rotor or an aerial screw based on a water screw, but intended to push against the fluid of the air instead of water. The design compromises a large structure built on a solid circular platform with a central vertical pole supported by three diagonal members meeting at a smaller circular plate just halfway up the pole. The inner edge of the sail winds clockwise around the pole while the other outage sail would connect to the rope wires and rings that rotates around the lower platform. The design envisions a crew of several people on the wooden platform running around the central pole while holding handles that rotated the sail. The upper half of the pole is then supported for the larger spiraling sail of the linen with a radius about 5 meters stiffened with a starch and the inner edge of the sail winds will round clockwise while the outer goes the other way. Speaking of flying objects, the Ornithopter, or Ornithopter is an aircraft that flies by flapping its wings as designers sought to imitate the flapping wings of flight of birds, bats, and insects, although machines may differ in forms. They're usually built on the same scale as flying animals. Larger, crude uh, ornithopters were often been used uh, to build. Some of them have been actual successful as well, as crude ornithopters are generally either powered by engines or the pilot. Some early crew flight attempts may have been intended to achieve flapping wing flight, but probably only as a guide than it was actually achieved. The included purported flights of the 11th century Catholic monk in 1485, Leonardo da Vinci began to study the flight of birds as he grasped that humans are just too heavy and not strong enough to fly using wings simply attached to the arms. He therefore sketched a device to which an aviator would lie down on the plank and work two large membrous wings using hand levers and foot pedals and a system of pulleys. His flying machine was an aircraft that would be flying its flapping its wings as a design to show that humans could fly. Even if they have a sophisticated flight control system, however, the design was never built by the designer himself. Scuba-like suit is what Leonardo da Vinci wanted to make as he's such a great artist. After all, he made a pretty good inventor. His fascination around the world around him is what inspired him to use usages of his inventions with water. In his lifetime, da Vinci designed many inventions dealing with water, perhaps most notably the scuba gear. While working in Venice, the water city, in 1500, da Vinci designed his scuba gear for sneak attacks on enemy ships for underwater situations. He really liked, like, making weapons and stuff. The leather diving suit was equipped with a bag-like mask that went over the diver's head. Attached to the mask around the nose area were two caned tubes that led up to the cork diving belt floating above the surface. Air was provided from the opening of the tubes of the diver below, and the mask was equipped with a valve-operated balloon that could be deflated or inflated, so the diver could more easily surface or sink. Additionally, Leonardo da Vinci's scuba gear invention incorporated a pouch for the diver to go into the toilet, and da Vinci is yet for a scuba gear like so many of his inventions didn't actually become well known until his famous codex, a 12 volume set of his drawings and notes after it was published after his death. He said in a quote once, when you are obligated to jump into the sea, let yourself be carried by the waves. Always keep in your mouth on the end of the tube which the air passes into the garment and if it should become necessary for you to take a breath when the foam prevents you to, draw through the mouth out of the tube from the air and within the coat. Of course with water gear, if you don't want to dive, you just gotta have your water shoes. Leonardo da Vinci may not have been able to walk on water, but he did design a set of shoes that he could hope could accomplish the task. So maybe Crocs if you want to make a water shoe, do it now. Based on one of the drawings found in the Codex Atlanticus, a notebook of Leonardo, he wanted to develop something facilitated with water by foot, at least for traveling, at least briefly. The shoes appear to have some feature of inflated animal skin or bladder attached to the person's feet. The Leonardo mentions water boots or statalvoli de aqua several times in his notebooks and the picture of a man walking on water accompanies with water-focused devices, including diving mechanisms. 
Mentioned in a review of the Codex explains how Da Vinci's walk on water drawing is full of personality, and it's not technically descriptive drawing as one might find out, but rather just a cool pen design. The protocol tank or armored car was shaped like a cross between tortoise and spaceship. Hmm? This behemoth would have been powered by eight men turning pedals by hand. Although it was never made, he um, thought that the metal plated wood structure on the wheels with cannons around the edge to slits allow soldiers to shoot their weapons from the inside. Tanks were commissioned by then Duke of Milan, Ludovico Sforza, of course, who had been charged with defending the city from invasion. And one of Da Vinci's many, many, many hundreds of drawings of military engineering, it was professioned and a salary made job, so I hoped it worked out. So it was a very important starting point for his career. And of course, in Milan, um, intriguingly, the original design included a major defect. The front and the rear wheels were geared to turn in the opposite direction. If it was built as drawn, the vehicle would never have actually worked. Given the polymath pacifist's view and clear understanding of mechanical forces, some historians believe that this was no mistake, but an act of deliberate sabotage sought in disrupting history. And speaking of history, that's all today. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe. My name is Jessa, and I wish you all the best. <laughs>